It's time for the Giz Whiz with Mads Mattis Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1794, recorded Thursday, August 27th, 2020. Chad gets fired! This episode of the Giz Whiz, Dickie D has a mini what the heck is it gadget, a new tech gadget from Wow We, and my final fire gadget coming up next on the Giz Whiz. It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Giz Whiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease, under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, the crowned head of gadgetry, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good. I just realized that's our new intro, right? It is! We have a new Everything, intro. It looks, it looks so crisp and clean, and I'm so embarrassed that I can't remember who sent that in. That was... Uh, I will look during one of our videos, and uh, we will congratulate him. He did Chad's warehouse, Ivan. and now this, the Ivan. That Ivan. Ivan. Okay, Ivan. Thank you. Uh, oh yeah, and it was perfect timing. We have the new <laughs> gigantic TV. We're an all new Gizwiz, except <laughs> really we're just the same dumb show. Yeah, we That's just uh, we can't make the show any better. We can just get bigger TVs and better <laughs> graphics. The we easy can just way. polish that. Well, I don't forget <laughs> the rest of the saying, but yeah. Uh, so what have you been up to this last week? Uh, let's see, uh, Dennis and I going through a construction hell. I, I sent you a couple of photos. So, uh, you know, we're putting in this, uh, going into gas heat. So now that the burn, the gas heater's in, Con Ed came Monday morning at 8 a.m. with, uh, jack hammers and started digging oh up God. the street and the sidewalk uh, the closest to me is our sidewalk, and then a little further, you can see how far Holy they're digging. Moly. I know they're digging from the center of the they actually closed the street off, uh, from the center of the street, I guess, where the gas main is. And then uh, they dug up the street, then they dug up the sidewalk, and then they dug a hole into the side of the building. What type of connect. heating did y'all have before? Was it coal? <laughs> I'm just oil. Uh, oil. Uh, it feels like oil. none of this is so, worth it at this point. <laughs> I know. A Keep giant oil. truck would come. The only thing is in the dead of winter, Oops. if the truck, the oil truck couldn't get there. A anyway. Um, and and the oil burner was also making weird noises. And, uh, you know, the new thing I can tell just by the timer that the landlord can control the heat from his smartphone. Oh, yeah. So hopefully if he's one night having a bad day, he can just go in and shut the heat off. But what's neat is Monday, when they uh, they came back Tuesday morning, a car had parked in the way. Oh, no. So what they forgot to do was when they leave now, a truck comes with a crane and puts down these gigantic cement blocks. What? So that no one, so what it was, was the the uh, the crane on Monday forgot to put in the furthest uh, cement block on the left of the screen. Yeah. So a, pa yeah, a car parked right there, and the car's bumper was over that metal plate that they have to lift up with a crane. So they came and they said, um, calls when that car's gone. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so, so the funny thing is, so Monday they do that and make a racket from eight in the morning. They start on the dot of eight and they stop at three. For some reason, the man next door who is a plumber and works till five had got some kind of, uh, an easement that they can do construction in head house from 4 to 9 p.m. Oh. every day. Oh. So Dennis and I have our meditation hour. Oh, my gosh. From 3 to 4. Oh, my gosh. I that, know. That I know. time. That, yeah. yeah. And Dennis has the worst because they are, they are swapping his kitchen and his living room. 
and it's the floor right next to Dennis's wall. Is, oh gosh. So is getting Dennis gets the worst of it. Fortunately, the studio, the hallway is between me and that building. So oh my gosh. Um, this is where we come to uh, get get away from the noise. <laughs> anyway, so that's what's new with me. How about you? Nothing really new. I did, I redid my red hair, so it's redder than ever. Oh um, yes! Oh that's, my gosh! That's really it. Um, <laughs> and it's more more red than normal, right? Yeah. So like it had just. I think it had been half a year since I had actually gone through the whole process of bleaching it, getting rid of the brown, putting the red in, that sort of thing. And in between, I will add just dye to what has already been bleached. So you got your brown hair, you have to bleach it to yellow, and then you put the red dye in. But I can kind of just keep adding red dye as my hair grows and not have to re-bleach. So... It had been like half a year since I had bleached out the brown. So the brown was slowly taking over. So I finally oh, okay. bleached it all out. And, and Now, uh, when you're living. 45 and bald, <laughs> will you be using spray paint? <laughs> it's probably that. I think a wig cry, is what I'm cry hoping lawn. for. Oh, yeah, exactly. A toupee. Oh, the classic. Spirit of Halloween. <laughs> there you go. There you yeah. go. I hope that I am saved because I don't bleach on my scalp. I always leave hair. Oh, so oh, like oh, okay. you okay. can see when I pull this up, it's brown or it should be in theory. Oh. There's there should be oh, a oh, little yeah, okay. gap okay, yeah. of brown. Um, mm. what's funny is is I leave so, like a good inch when I am applying it and then over time, it just seeps in and kind of gets uh, everything. They, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't put it directly on my scalp, which is, I hope, okay. good. Is your tongue red? Does it seep down that far? No. See, if you don't wear up. gloves, your fingers and hands become. Oh like, my god! Absolutely red, especially while you're dealing with the dye. I mean, it is a product made to stain. So if you get it on oh. counters, if you get it at the bottom of your bathtub, you get it on your hands. It's just oh instantly God. stained. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind right. of the biggest update I can think of. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. should we jump into our... Let's get uh, into it. We're going to start with a mini. What the heck is it? Here mini? we go. What the heck is it? All right. We're doing a what the heck is it. Uh, Dennis is doing the camera work. So, this is going to be uh, a little bit difficult. Okay. You ready? What the heck is it? Uh, okay, because if I show you any more... A fist. <laughs> if I show you any more, you'll know what it is. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Maybe I can Maybe I can show you some of it. And Okay. Uh, you might right, have okay. a guess, Chad. What the Dennis heck is did. it? Uh, no idea. No a idea. A scanner? Okay. All right, so the reason I'm doing this at the top of the show... Oh, a flashlight. Is because it's a neat little gadget. Actually, it's a neat mini gadget. Oh, that's an LED. Uh, I paid six bucks for it, but it turns out it's deal of the day. But it seems it's been deal of the day for several days now. Um, and you can get it a lot cheaper than I did. But I'll tell you a little bit about it, okay? So it's a mini rechargeable flashlight, so you don't have to put batteries in it. Uh, so uh, a bright regular beam, you click it, it goes into the useless blinking and then it goes <laughs> that, into task light almost no one that's wow and then it goes off. oh you know what yeah. follow me dennis i forgot <laughs> we always do the dark room the dark i forgot room, so we, we need to do the dark light. room and if it really is uh okay so robot okay and it's focusable okay no, so I love those types. And we can zoom and zoom and zoom. That's as far out as it goes, but I'm very close to that. And then we'll go into flashing, which is useless. And then we'll go into wow. the task light, which is pretty That's pretty bright, isn't it? Yeah, right. and very wide. And okay, now we can go back to the studio. And wait until um, you hear the price. So I paid oh. six bucks for mine. And let me just uh, tell you a couple of other things about it. So I was wondering, how do you know when it's charging? All right, so it's USB in the back here. And uh, so this Which, is pretty neat. The button that you press I wish everything to would turn just it do on that. and off becomes the charging light. 
the company says it charges in 30 minutes. Uh, I think it actually took an hour. All right, this becomes solid red when it's fully charged. And I'm going to tell you the run times that they uh, say. Um, so IP67, that means you can drop it in water up to three feet for 30 minutes. I'm not so sure about that, only because there's no cover for the USB port. So that, to me, seems it's a way for water to get in the flashlight. Um, so it's a 200 lumens. The side light is 200 lumens. Okay. The front light is 300 lumens. It has a 500 milliamp rechargeable battery, so just charge it when you need it. And it says that when it's fully charged, the front light will run for an hour and a half. That's pretty decent. And... Okay. The strobe for two and a half hours, I don't think you'll, you're going to need that for anything. Uh, has a little lanyard, and they don't tell you how long the little uh, task light light's for. It's, it's probably somewhere around it, uh, one and a half hours, too. Uh, okay, so I do, I do like this. This is really neat. ta -da! So And as of 4 o'clock today, the sale is still uh, So it's three forty nine, and a buck... Uh, 50 shipping, but yeah, if you buy three of them, it ships for free. <laughs> so for like $10.50, so you'll get three of them. And it says 81% off. I don't know if the original price was 18 bucks or not. Uh, the one difference is theirs seems to ship in a blister pack, and mine came in a carrying case. Wow. Okay. And it comes with... Um, I don't know how this extra cable got in there, but it comes with a little USB charging uh, device. So I think this is really neat. And, and the thing is, I don't know if you do this too, but if I were rebuying this, I would certainly buy three to save the shipping charge. And then when they come, I go, well, I don't need three. Dennis, you want one of these? And then Dennis says, well, I have 18 other flashlights. <laughs> so I said, oh, the guy next door can probably use it. So I, I get these bargains, and uh, most of the stuff ends up at the shelter. Uh, but that's it. I think it's pretty neat. And it does it even have a name? I don't think it does. Oh, oh it's called Pocket Fire. Pocket Fire Ultra Bright. Pocket size, rechargeable, adjustable beam, Cobb LED uh, chip on board flashlight. Um, that's it. I just bought it. <laughs> Did you? Yes. Oh, you just bought a single one? No, I bought three. What's funny yeah. is I I was thinking, okay, three dollars and something cents. Why not get three? I mean, it's gonna be around ten bucks for three of them. Like that seems yes. like a great price. So I added three, and then shipping was free. This is before you got there in the video. And I was like, wow, shipping is free. And then <laughs> you mentioned it in the video. I was like, oh, well, this is yeah, great. yeah, no, no, that's why I, I, I thought uh, I, I, I bought mine like Friday, but I, all week I kept yeah. saying, you know, this is still deal of the day. I'm just going to do it on the show. I'll wait till four o'clock uh, of the day of the show. <clears throat> and if it's still on sale, uh, it's, it's a great deal. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So I just spent $10 on three of them and uh, shipping was included. I think that that little side light is awesome because of like whenever you're a whenever you're working you can just do that but i'm specifically thinking of camping you want a torch that is directed whenever you're walking around camping but then you get back to your tent and you really want a lantern there's been hundreds of products that thousands of products that have that feature but this seems so bright i just and i love how compact it's, it is it's a, yeah it almost seems that normally they overrate everything on amazon this almost seems like they're underestimating yeah, uh, the lumens. Yeah. But you know, waterproof wise, don't you yeah. think water could get into the flashlight yeah, through I the USB? Know. I agree. I'm I'm hesitant about that. There's a chance that that I have I have seen on phones they have a charging port just like this, and I know the the phone is rated to go underwater, so it does oh. exist that there's a port that can exist and also be waterproof, but. I would, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't test it. Basically, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I don't have a lot of confidence. I know it exists. Right. It's not impossible. But did they actually do that? I don't know. Um, uh, 
Yeah. So yeah, that's that's awesome. The other thing is, I love that it's USB rechargeable. I absolutely love that because I'm getting so tired of these double AA, A, triple A batteries floating around everywhere. You toss them when you don't need them. The I feel like the rechargeable double A AA and triple A batteries are never as good as the non rechargeable ones. And having a actual battery built in that I can just recharge, huge A plus. So that's that's what got me to buy it. So yeah. I don't. And oh, it's easy it. to, you know, throw in any kind of bag. Even yeah. if you think you need a flashlight, I think it's, yeah. Just toss it in? Uh, it's excellent. Excellent. I'm turning around and see that I leave mine on my, I don't know what I did it with mine. Maybe Dennis took it already. Um, okay. So we're going to move on to uh, something new from Wowie. And uh, I saw this at that uh, sweet, sweet event the virtual event. And I said, David, can you send me one of these? Cause <laughs> I can't quite grasp what it does. Um, so he sent me one and he sent me a video. So you'll see me try to use it and then we'll see what it can do. Let's take a look at hands full. Sweet, sweet. Was this event where you have tons of toys? Well, it's a virtual event. It was this year. Uh, and we're going to show the company video, but before we do that, we're going, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay. Uh, grab, tap, twist. Remember Simon? Well, this is like Simon on steroids because multiple players, uh, let's see, pull this out, I guess. <laughs> I can't even do this part. It's part of the game. Oh, okay. Grab and hold the green and yellow buttons. Well, wait a minute. I haven't even... It's still in the box. I'm sorry. <laughs> you fail. Grab and hold the green and yellow buttons. I'll uh, hold it. I'm doing it. Oh, wow. Me until red is facing down. Red facing down. <laughs> now unpackage it while red is Me facing down. Red is facing down. It's facing down. <laughs> oh, is it like Good. that? Oh. Grab orange. Oops. Wrong color. Red. Tap center button to try again. <laughs> well, we're going to unbox it. Okay. okay. Already I'm lost. Uh, Hands full is the game that always gets out of hand. It sells it itself. It. What did she say? It, the See game later. that always gets out of hand. Yes. Uh, all right. So I am even having trouble getting out of the box. This is a right. Uh, basically, I didn't want to wreck the box, but why not? As you probably know, gadgets that we use on the show go out to Little Shelter, okay, for their bazaars. So, if possible, I try to save boxes so that <laughs> when they auction them off, they look decent. But that's not going to be the case with this. All right, we're going to. Ah, right. Good. Okay, okay. You know what? I guess we're just going to... You need to teach them about frustration-free huh? packaging. Huh? Yeah, Okay, so yeah. it's out of the box. We thought it was going to be difficult, but uh, it just took a couple of tools and about an hour of our time. And <laughs> 77 pieces of tape and little things <laughs> hidden in the back. And uh, Anyway, all right, so this is what hands fall looks like, mm -hmm. and you open it up. And then these, uh, you, you can play different, I'll just do solo to see what it's like. Hey there. Grab and hold the green and yellow buttons. Flip me until red is facing down. Good. Grab orange with your left hand. <laughs> oh, oh, orange. Oops, <laughs> wrong color. Red, tap center button to try again. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to try again because we're going to watch their video. Uh, Okie dokie. Uh, I sent you the link to yep. uh, their YouTube video. So here is their video. This is what you really can do with it. <laughs> uh, it's out of hand. Grab blue. Tap blue. Orange up. Uh, don't let go or you lose. You let go. Uh, Hey there, select mode to start. Solo, level, two, three, four, five, uh -oh. six, 
see how long you can keep up. Too, too many levels. Team easy. Team hard. Oh. Team mode. If you let go, it's game over for everyone. Survivor. Who will be the last one holding? You're the winner. How many players? Two, three, four. Let's get tangled. Grab blue. From behind your back, grab yellow. From the inside, grab orange. Player two, grab purple. From player one. Under your leg, tap green. Using your head, tap yellow. Orange up. Blue down. Switch your left hands. Player two and three. High five in three, two, one. Foot tap. Hit bums. Head bump. What? Swap places now. You have five, four, three. Good. Everyone sit down. Everyone stand on one leg. Bug says just cheat. Everyone jump. <laughs> now I do know Spin I can clockwise. tell you how, how to cheat in a minute. Oh, we could stop it there. Everyone pull out your phone and send a donation <laughs> to <laughs> the Tangled game. Oh my gosh. I, uh, so I emailed uh, the PR guy, Dave, and I said, Dave, wh what is in this thing? And he said, well, I'll get an answer from uh, Davin at Wowie. Davin is the guy that did the, uh, the toothbrush demo several weeks ago with the, uh, the game toothbrush that gets kids to play. So he said, Dick, uh, there's a gyro mechanism inside the housing. It can detect up, down, the position of each color, and when the unit is shaken. Um, it also can detect which buttons are held and when they're released for the next action. However, jump, spin, stand on one leg are validated by the people playing the game. Right, right. Okay, so those commands are, so if you, if three of you want to cheat, you can make the game easier for yourself. <laughs> Just look at the other players and see if they're going to call you out or not. And then... Yes, exactly. There you go. There you go. <laughs> or if you are, you know, you can just say, I did do that. Yeah. In that yeah. tone. And then I'll say, oh, okay. Okay. That's so um, funny. Anyway, it's like, it's kind of like Simon on yeah. steroids. It's like, a, yeah. it's like a mashup of Simon and Twister. In oh, a Twister. Way. Like, yes. That's what I, you yes. know, and, uh, and also it reminds me a lot of Bop It because that was a handheld oh, yes, yes. device where you would have to follow instructions. Um. Yeah. It's nice. It's it's funny because it seems simpler than say Bop It that had like a twisting mechanism. And everything it only has buttons and a gyroscope, but it's done a very good job of software of of making it more because you can see if you're dancing, see if you shake it, you know, twist it this way, twist it that way. So what do hands? It the, do it from the inside. Do it yeah. from while it's behind you. Yeah, um, I like it. And, and, yeah, it's twenty five bucks, so it's not bad. Yeah, um, it's hands full, and uh, it's on Amazon twenty four ninety nine, and I don't. I, I, it's probably elsewhere too. Yeah, it's so perfect. Grab it, twist it, and tap it. <laughs> there you uh, go, hands full. Yeah, hands full. And our final guy is. I had to buy this because it is the twenty twenty version of a crank radio Ooh. so here it is so it's the 2020 newest emergency crank radio and uh so i bought one on amazon first of all puts a lot bigger in the picture but it has a lot of features that for an emergency i, I think might be good so one being an easy open like. box <laughs> yeah um, yes, thank you Oh my, it really is small. Wow. Um, all right, so I'll, t I'll tell you what is nice about this, uh, comparing it to some of the others. This has a 4,000 milliamp battery in it, so that's pretty decent. That should be able to charge most phones 
uh, more than one time. And, um, you know, this may be one of the uh, things where... Oh, okay, it does have a little bit of power. Uh, these two things lit up. I remember reading that four of them light up to tell you that it's fully charged. So according to this, it's half charged. And it has a flip up. Oh, oh wow. This is kind of nice. All right. So the solar panel also has uh, a fairly decent area light in the back. I'll close that. And we'll see what the flashlight is. The weather band has, oh, okay. So there are little LEDs for tuning of the weather band. And www.weather.gov slash beep slash. And there's also an antenna. Oh, okay. Antenna to uh, make the station better. There's also a crank handle. All right. Uh, uh, uh. There's also a way to... A little uh, rubberized door over here. All right. Uh, to charge it and to charge your phone out. So that's charging in and that's out. And I'm still trying to find the flashlight. Uh, oh, this must be up at the top. All right. So it says that there's a three-way flashlight. That's a flashlight. Oh, wow. I'm not sure what the third thing does. Uh, all right, so I don't think I even have to charge it up. I, I, I do like this. It did really well on Amazon. So it's 30, uh, about 38 bucks, okay? And it got, oh, uh, what is it? Let me just go to the stores here. And it was 628 people, 4.7 out of five stars. That is really good. Uh, it's very compact. And it's uh, IP, uh, IX3, I think. I think IX3 is not terribly waterproof. I think uh, IX3 is drooling. I think it can drool <laughs> on it. Um, and probably morning dew. Uh, so, so it's AM, FM. Not bad. The, the first night of the, the GOP convention. I don't know about you guys. Anyway, okay. It sounds fairly decent. You know, actually, the fact that it's not much bigger doesn't upset me with this because if you're going camping or something, this is a really easy thing to do. Oh, and the other thing that I forgot, this light here, um, there's a switch on here somewhere that you can make this a motion-activated light. So if you're in a tent at night, and you get up and you want to uh, leave the tent, this can come on automatically. It'll stay on, I Actually, believe, Actually, I, I see the switch there. Uh, I see the light or auto. Or 90 seconds and oh, yeah. it'll go off automatically. Is there a dishwasher, too? And it, then it says, <laughs> yep, it's dishwasher. You just throw this in with your dishes. Um, oh, a, a little carry strap and a carabiner. You know what? I think this is pretty neat. The multi-purpose crank radio... And when you see no brand name, you know you can get it a thousand different places. But I did check around on Amazon, and a lot of the other ones just had uh, a 2,000 milliamp battery, okay? This one is 4,000 milliamps, and it's a replaceable battery. So it's uh, very decent if you're going camping and it does come with a little charging cable. That's it. Happy camping. Happy trails. <laughs> I love it. I think that's a great product. Yeah. And a little SOS button. I guess if you want help, you hold that in. And oh, it does wow. That, and it does flashing. Yeah. Wow. Holy moly. So, so the one thing, um, the real expensive ones, like the $80 ones, have weather band and NOAA same where you set the radio for the area you're in. And oh. it'll sound an alarm. If there's an approaching storm, I don't know if you could hear it outside, <laughs> but yeah. we're having a terrible thunderstorm right now. Um, so if this was the same radio, that probably would have gone off to tell me that it was raining out. Uh, but for 38 bucks, this is really, oh, look at, they added a $2 off coupon. Too. Yeah, look at that. I was just looking at that. You can clip that coupon 
If you want, there's the bucks. switch you were talking about, that light and auto switch next yes, to Yes, exactly. The, and that's, I've okay. never seen that on uh, a little radio like that before. Yeah. So if you want that area light to light when you stand up in the tent, it'll go on, it'll stay on as long as there's movement and then shut off automatically. Uh, I think it's pretty neat. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very, very cool. Um, and also, it's so the one thing I think it is a 2020 version because way down the company said, um, we took our old unit, we listened to people comp uh, sending in letters and saying, I, I, I wish it did this and this and this, and we incorporated that, and that's what's in this new version. This so, is great. This is yeah. awesome. Very cool. Something that needs to be in everyone's emergency preparedness bag. Yeah, this. along with the flashlight. Then yeah. you can go anywhere. Anywhere. And for, like you mentioned, 4,000 milliamp hours is enough to charge a phone and some. So I like the, I like the size of the battery that's included. Very good. Yeah. And, and if all fails, you got the crank handle, which is right. really good. I think it was one minute of cranking for, I think, 30 minutes of the light being on and six minutes of phone time, whatever it is, it's all, it's all on that page. The, the cranking is, it's a very large handle. Let me just get it out again. And it is very smooth. Let me just, yeah, this thing is really neat. I've tested some of these where they have a tiny little handle and yes. it's like really hard work. This is really effective according to them. Uh, a little bit of winding gives you a lot of power. There if you, you want it uh, next month, you can get it from AliExpress for $23. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Remember the oh, oh, well, uh, uh, Amazon uh, version $4 was... $4 shipping. Yeah, there is $4 shipping. So it's... it's uh, well, let me you're think. Still uh, saving, you're still okay, saving... $2, like $2 off. $10. It's $5. Yeah, you're saving a bit. A um, bit, yeah. Uh, there you go. And it also it also comes in orange. U.S. Okay, that's the U.S. one. Yeah, three dollars. Okay, yeah, pretty good. There Very you go. Nice. Uh, is there anything that is not on <laughs> AliExpress? Um, let me think. Um, no, <laughs> official yeah, yeah. Disney merchandise. Uh, there's unofficial. <laughs> yeah, oh yes, yes, but not official. That's uh, right. <laughs> with that. Let's move on to... You know you don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Corner. Oh, no. Get it. Get it. So, we are here with the last of the fire gadgets. Someone mentioned it in chat. My hair became fiery today for the last <laughs> of the fire gadgets. So uh, this is an interesting one. I recorded a video earlier, so let's just jump in. Hey Diggity, so here we are with another flame fire gadget. This is Pyro Putty. So the idea of this product Ooh. is that you can use it as a fire starter <clears throat> when camping or out and about. So it comes in this little tin, which can easily be packed away in a backpack or whatever has some threads, and then there is the putty. And you take this and you put it on something flammable, then light it on fire, and it will sustain the fire. Something that's interesting about this putty, this is my first time really digging into it, is that it is, there's different types of putty depending on your weather situation. So you can actually see this on the box. There is a winter blend, for the degrees of negative 20 Fahrenheit to 70 Fahrenheit, a summer, which is 40 to 110, and then there's also an eco blend, which is made using renewable resources. So we ended up getting the summer blend. On the back of the box, it gives you the instructions on how to use it. Basically, grab some putty, pull it apart so you can see these little fibers, which you can kind of see right there, stick it to something, and then light it on fire. So, Feeling it, it doesn't feel too tacky or too sticky, which is kind of nice. Uh, obviously, if you were out and about in the real world, you would not just stick it directly to a log. You'd probably stick it to some sticks or maybe some charcoal or something like that. And then it would 
catch that on fire, but we don't have any sticks. I, I couldn't go, I couldn't find any. So we just have this log. So it's gonna be a little bit more for demonstration purposes. So we're just gonna, it has a smell to it. It kind of smells like, hmm. I don't know what that smells like. It's kind of a memorable smell. So we should be able to stick this <laughs> onto the log there. Yeah, squish, squish, squish. Yeah, it's kind of stuck on there. I feel like I removed it. It smells of my, like licorice. Um, or, oh, I placed hard the work smell. in breaking it apart. We also have the gadget from the, this is the gadget from the first week. And I remember it messed with the audio, so hopefully the audio will be fine. But here we go. Let's light this on fire, see what it does. Ooh. So it's definitely staying on fire. I'm going to put it into our thing right here. Let me stick it on. Ooh, wow. There we go. So there you go. Well, it's working for sure. And it even, ha I mean, that's a pretty intense flame for really only the putty currently is caught on fire. If I was out camping, I would give this a little bit of air. And hopefully the whole house won't smell like smoke here. The flue is open. I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, that is quite a lot of flame for that small amount of putty that I stuck on to that log. And for not having any sticks or kindling or anything like that to really get this started, it is causing quite a fire on this. I mean, <laughs> we're trying to light an entire log on fire right now. <laughs> oh, it's about ready to fall. That pyro putty is about ready to fall. Let me get my poker here and see if I can stick this. Let's stick it back in there. Or at least rest it. There you go. Rest it on that that log. Wow, I'm I am seriously impressed. That is a lot of fire coming from the putty. And it is sustained and it has lasted for quite a long time. So it has been a few minutes and it is still going. The package does mention that a quarter size ball, I think that's about what I pulled out, maybe a little less than that should burn for 15 plus minutes. And that also it is weatherproof. So if it starts to rain on it, it'll be fine. I'm sure that if the putty got a little wet, wow. it would not be a big deal. It also mentions UV glow distinct, discreetly marked mark trail. I have no idea what that means, but that's another feature of it. So, I would say that that has worked. I mean, it's worked fantastically. Without any tinder, I can, you can really see that the log has caught on fire there, especially when I blow at those embers with that wood. Now, we don't have an entire fire going, and obviously this is indoors, and I would normally use the gas to get the whole thing started, but uh, I'm really, really, really impressed with pyro putty. And for the amount that I used, we still have quite a lot left and this could easily go backpacking with me to really anywhere it's fairly lightweight not really all that heavy the packaging says that it is whoops sorry about that two ounces so not that heavy i assume that that is weight ounces not liquid ounces who knows and uh it's good i like it pyro putty so uh, yeah not too expensive either the Amount that I got, the two ounces that I got, ended up being $13. And they have all these different versions. So they have the winter version, the summer version. They have a citronella smelling version. Oh, that's good. Ultralight. So if you're going backpacking and you want it to be really, really light, as in weight. The uh, cinnamon version. What else is this? This last one is barbecue charcoal for making charcoal light. Um, and then also you can get, uh, I saw some other ones. It's look, it seemed like you could get larger cans of this stuff if you wanted more, but I'm not seeing that. Mm, it, it, it looks like, I, I stumbled on a page where it looks like you can get three different kits for $28. Yeah. 
And people love it. The reviews have been yeah. really, really good. So I think I'm sold on it. In a normal situation, you would have sticks and smaller... See this, this looks gigantic. Unless if that's the tiniest little camping thing. And then unless that's a tiny little chiminea. I thought this was a huge thing. Maybe I'm, maybe the perspective is just messing with me here. Um, but anyway, so normally you'd use sticks, you'd use smaller logs, like, you know, to catch the, the actual big logs on fire. But there's, if you use that technique, this would totally get the job done and have, and you'd have a perfect fire running. So pyro putty, very, very good for those of you who are fire um, challenged. If you, if you need some help <laughs> getting a campfire going, pyro putty. And that's it. That's the last of the fire gadgets. So we'll be asking the patrons what they want next month's theme to be over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. So sign up now if you want to vote on the next month's theme. With that, let's head on into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Our letter is from Linda Norman, who emails and says, Dick and Chad, I watched the episode where you were lamenting the lack of affordable webcams. I may have found a solution for some people. It's not perfect, but it certainly solved the problem I was having. I uh, still love the show as always, Linda Norman. And here is Linda's warehouse video. Hello, Dick and Chad. I was just watching the latest episode of The Gizwiz, and you were talking about webcams and the lack of availability thereof. Um, as I've mentioned before, I am a college math professor, and back in March we went to uh, online classes and remote learning, and when that happened, I discovered I was short one webcam. Um, I do have a YouTube channel, so I actually have a studio. Uh, I'd been doing it with just one camera because I didn't really need more than one camera. But uh, once I started online teaching, I discovered that my students kind of liked it when I used my whiteboard here and I could stand up just like I was standing in the classroom and teach to them on the whiteboard rather than using the online whiteboard or the, the on-screen whiteboard that I've been using in my videos, in my YouTube videos. So I did what probably everyone in the world did um, at the beginning of all this is I went and looked for a second Logitech C920. Couldn't find one. <laughs> they don't exist anymore and the ones that do are ridiculously expensive. So every week since this started, so I'm going to say since mid-March when we went to online classes, I've been going online, searching around, looking for a Logitech C920 and not finding one. And for the last six weeks, that's what I've been doing. Up until last week when I um, happened across an article with the title, Do you have a spare Android phone? Turn it into a webcam. So my brain immediately went to, oh my god, yes, I have a spare Android phone, uh, my old Pixel 2, when I upgraded to the Pixel 3, I uh, kept my old Pixel 2. For some reason, I didn't sell it. Something in my brain said, don't sell it. Uh, so I kept it. And with the help of an app, I've been able to turn this into a webcam. Uh, lighting's not great right now, but that's, that's beside the point. Um, but it does make a decent webcam. Uh, I'm going to switch over to my actual Logitech camera here. All right, so this is me in better lighting. I don't have the lighting set up in the back of my studio right now. Um, but what I did was I took 
an old Android phone, and if you hang on for one minute, I'm going to detach it from the tripod here. Oh, I love that skeleton in the back. Okay. <laughs> so I have an old Android oh, wow. phone that I am using, and actually you can kind of see it this way, I guess, if you see me. All right, I'm going to stop the app. Okay, so I stopped the app, and you can see what it looks like there. All right, you tap on that camera icon, and it turns your phone into an IP camera. All right, so the app that I'm using is, hang on one second. Uh, here we go, that one. The app that I'm using is called um, LiveDroid, and it'll run pretty much on any relatively recent Android phone. I don't know if there's a, uh, if there's a, uh, if it says what the most recent OS is, but it's uh, it's decent. It's it's actually decent. It gives me a second webcam. Um, I am skillfully hiding the address bar up here because I don't want people seeing the IP address of the camera. So when you start up the app, all right, it recommends that you let the app run in the background. This way the phone doesn't shut off and you don't lose your feed all of a sudden. Um, and then you tap on that camera icon and uh, you have an IP web camera. It flashes a little IP address. You type that IP address into your web browser and then it pulls up the webcam. This is where, this is when I turned it off. This is where it stopped. Okay, into your uh, web browser and you have a second camera or a webcam if you didn't have one before. I hope this helps some people. That's great. Nice. Very That's cool. That's great. Yeah. And a, no, I, a webcam that is, or the the cameras on phones are way better than most webcam cameras. So Yes. That's pretty that, cool. That picture looked great. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. good. So uh, a okay. free way to, to uh, get a second webcam, and uh, <laughs> probably everybody in our audience has at least one phone right. uh, s sitting in a drawer because right. you just can't part with it for some reason. Uh, so, Linda, that was great. Uh, thank you. You'll get the current issue of Mad Magazine, which I conveniently have here. You'll get this issue of Mad and uh, we're always looking for more videos. I think I have one one or two videos left. Uh, make a video one to three minutes and just do it in horizontal. Make sure we can see what you're talking about and hear you and put it up on YouTube and you can click uh, unlisted when you upload it if you only want people with the URL to be able to see it and send it to mail at gizwiz.tv, mail at gizwiz.tv. Anything to do with the gadget, new gadget, old gadget, uh, something you bought and loved, something you bought and hated. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Send it in. With that, let's move on to the letter. So a letter's from Mo, and it's a very short letter, and it says, Dick and Chad, would you get a cut using this thing? Well, Mo found a video. We can, I guess, start playing a video to see what this... <laughs> <laughs> so for the audio <laughs> listeners, there's this guy, and you see his head almost as if it's a bust. Like, he, he, the, his, the whole bottom part of his body is covered by a machine <laughs> and you can tell the top has some type of arm <laughs> now it's rotating it looks like some type of uh, frankenstein 3d printer oh my gosh with scissors on it that is terrifying yeah. um so let, let's go into the video a, a bit what he's what he's doing he's de dining, designing his own ro robot to cut his hair and he feels Scissor cutting is, gives you the best haircut. So he's going to stick his head in this thing 
and let the robot, it's a long video, it's like 13 minutes, oh but gosh, it's yeah. interesting because he said, I had my head in it and uh, this thing came out and it really pinched me hard and I thought, no, this is not good. I, so here he is. Oh, he's actually getting a haircut from it. So it looks mm. like it uses a mechanism just like a, a barber would where it pinches your hair in between its fingers to raise your hair up off of the scalp and then use scissors to cut that <laughs> hair. And so you can kind of see it going in there. Oh, it's so slow. Oh my gosh. I mean, would you, oh, and so is like it, a vacuum sucks yeah. the hair up. Yeah, it looks like some type of vacuum is, yeah, cutting up the hair. It doesn't look like it's doing a very good job of actually hitting the hair. Knowing that there is a, a some type of thing in between. So it uses a plastic grabber to grab the hair before it, sli it slices. So that makes me a little bit less nervous. Um, oh my gosh. Could you imagine if he, he put this... He sold this like on on the side of the road and like <laughs> haircuts <laughs> by a robot. We have ten robots. Come on in. Yeah, no exactly. one will touch you. No human will. No fear of germs. Oh my gosh. The only fear is being slashed to death. His haircut looks really bad at the end too. I feel <laughs> like he had a better haircut at the beginning. Um, it was very funny if you're an old film buff. There is a movie called The Brain That Wouldn't Die. And it's a woman who, uh, it's one of these cheap horror movies. And it's a woman who's been decapitated. And they keep her head alive in a tray. And and she talks. And, and it looks just like this guy. If you don't <laughs> see the very bottom of the screen, it looks like, like a severed head getting a haircut from a robot. Oh uh, anyway, the link uh, the link is in the show notes if you want to watch the video and indeed build your own. My word, that is terrifying. Uh, congrats to him though for actually doing it. But holy moly, that is that is scary. Thanks, Mo, for the letter. Uh, hey, big thank you to our patrons over at patreoncom gizwiz. Thank you guys so 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 much for the support. You guys are incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you like the Gizwiz and want to give back, you can support over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. That is where we have our Patreon for all the supporters. We'll ask you guys about the themes. We'll post all of the new episodes. And it is a fun, fantastic time. If you want to give back another way via PayPal, you can do that on our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon tab, and then there is a PayPal link over there. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you can watch the show live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. There we are right now, live. Join the chat room and chat along with all the folks there. And if you don't catch it live, don't worry. You can subscribe on iTunes, on YouTube, or we have an RSS feed for you guys. <laughs> the thumbnail difference between the, the last episode and the second to last episode with that TV is uh, pretty uh, funny. Uh, astounding. Astounding. <laughs> so get a watching over there at gizwiz.tv. Head on over to gizwiz.biz, that's Dickie D's website, where he writes articles about all the gadgets that we cover on the show. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? And guess what this gadget is. Are we halfway through now? Do we have? Oh, no, we have like three days left. Oh, oh gosh, time flies. So get your guesses in right now, because we're going to find out what this gadget is. There are six Mad Magazines for correct answers and 12 Mad Magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers. This is 
obvious to me that, um, you know how they have water beds? Well, this is a water stool. So uh, you <laughs> can sit on it and get the cushion effect of, of water. Uh, wow. So if you think you know think what we this have is, a, a next project. get a guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I gave it away there because it was so such an accurate <laughs> guess. Um, so do that. It gives me dot biz. If you're listening to this, it, it might be too late already. So get over there. Thank you so much to our chat room for being here. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much to the fans for the support for the TV. I want to say thank you one oh, more time great. for that. The TV is wonderful. Incredible. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you on another episode. I'll be here. <laughs>